Hello, tonight is Tuesday night, September 21st, 2021. I'm Glenda Carlin, and this is my weekly A Course in Miracles meeting. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here, the ones that are here with the Zoom meeting, and thank you for viewing the YouTube video later. That's very, it's just so wonderful. I'm very pleased that I can be of help. I and in whatever Holy Spirit passes through me can be of help to you. Here comes Christian and Julia. Welcome, welcome. Here's Christian and Julia. So now we're recording. It's on the camera. Yeah, I know. I need to open it. So it's, what will it's right behind you I in know, that bag. Glenda, you are muted. Thank you. <laughs> Still here. Thanks. First thing I want to do is invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters, everyone and anyone help us. We will take all the help we can get and to use our joined life here to help all of humanity all animate and inanimate objects. We're here to help, help all those that we, we have no idea how this light can touch the light when we meditate here in a minute of others and help them in their awakening process because we're here to help all our brothers. First thing, and then so the second thing I want to do is recognize the Course says to see the, uh, the Son of God in each of our brothers or the face of Christ, or ultimately recognize God in each of our brothers and sisters. So first thing I'll say is, Holy Son of God, Joan, Holy Son of God, Gonzalo, Holy Son of God, Eli, Holy Son of God, Troy, Holy Son of God, Kareem, Holy Son of God, Teresa, Holy God, Son of God, Francis, Holy Son of God, Julia, Holy Son of God, Christian, and Holy Son of God, Glenda. It's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. As soon at the end of the day, look back on your day and think about the people, your family, friends, people on TV that you, we forgot to practice true forgiveness on and practice on them. So next, because sometimes I forget to do this, I want each of you to select three people on the screen and practice true forgiveness on them. And true forgiveness means a couple of things. First, you look past their form to the invisible light, clear light that's there. It's invisible of their immortal spirit. And I call it fake it while you make it. You're just looking past their form to that invisible light that's there. Plus, silently, you say a couple of things like all of it. Or you can say you are spirit, whole, pure, and innocent, all is forgiven and released. So that's in that four-page forgiveness document that I hopefully emailed each of you. And if you do not have it, just let me know and I'll re-email it. And here's uh, Lana. I think she goes by Lana, Darlana. Welcome, Darlana. Um, so pick Hi, three Linda. people. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So pick three people on the screen and practice true forgiveness on them. And on yourself, you can say, I am immortal spirit. This body is a false image and has nothing to do with what I am. Or you could say all of it to yourself. Because in that four-page forgiveness document in Gary Renard's Love Has Forgotten No One, either Art or Persis say, if you think of someone as all of it, meaning everything, you will be doing what very few people in history have ever done. Now think about that. You will be doing what very few people have done in history, which is billions of years. So congratulations that you have come to A Course of Miracles for this high, high Jesus teaching of how you think of your brother is how you think of yourself and, and can save you thousands of years in the awakening process. 
Um, so, the, oh, it's that simple. That's the other thing that, that I didn't get till after my arc of light was released in March of 2019 and the great race started to download. I just for over five years did what I just asked you all to do to whatever showed up shows up in front of your face. That's they, that's the what the Jesus says in the course. Um, and he says in the introduction to the workbook that you don't have to understand any of this. Your understanding is not needed. The purpose of these lessons is to change false perception to true perception. And, and beyond the course is that you gain knowledge. That's beyond the course, knowledge and understanding. You, we are just to do what Jesus says, which is practice true forgiveness. So that, that is that simple and it can, it can wake you up from the dream of separation from your brothers. So welcome, welcome for being here. So the next thing, third thing we do now is practice a minute, uh, do a little meditation. And it's only going to be a few minutes, but in that four-page document, there is a paragraph in the course, which is a meditation paragraph from the course where Jesus says, beyond the body, beyond the sun and stars, past everything you see is this arc of light. And then it says that this arc of light expands and the edges of the circle disappear and extends to infinity. That's that arc of light is buried in an onion with thousands of layers, or maybe I don't even know how many layers of judgment that we've had on our brothers because we didn't know any better. We didn't know any better about judging our brothers as a body. The Course says we're look, Christ's vision has one law. That is that you do not look at your brother as a body. You look beyond the body to that light that's there. Um, so, that as you practice that true forgiveness and Holy Spirit heals unconscious guilt that you can't get to. That's why it's called unconscious. So, and then that's between the two of us, meaning your practice of true forgiveness and Holy Spirit healing unconscious guilt, then layers of the onion get peeled away where your arc of light can be released and the great ray can download to, to continue to purify your mind from thoughts of separation from God. And this is a process that goes, can go on for years. It's not typical that this is just a brilliant flash of light and your total ego mind is undone. It can happen, but usually that can be fearful for people. So it, the Holy Spirit takes each person where they're at in their process in the length of time that's needed for them in their awakening process. Okay, so anyway, so now just relax in your chair and I want you to visualize a huge sun. You can either close your eyes or have them open, doesn't matter. Visualize a huge sun above your head and it's a million times the brightness of the sun that's in our sky that represents source. And from that sun, there are rays come off and in the course, in that course, in Jesus's course, he tells us that we're connected to eternity via a great ray. So you just focus your attention on a ray. Imagine there's a ray there and see that column of light, tube of light that come down the middle of you. It's that ray of light is currently down the middle of you. You're just not aware of it. And it's have it see, you're going to visualize it, just see it go into the ground. It's just a tube, a column of clear light. And it so it's extending from above your head, through your whole form, through your bottom, down to the earth, into the earth. So you, you, you ground yourself into the earth. This is not a practice where we're flighty or just floating around because ego likes that part. You want to be stable or sturdy, stabilized into the ground, your ray. And because it's clear and invisible, part of this process is visualizing that ray. And like I say to you all quite often, we've for billions of years been visualizing images with ego and agreeing with it. So what the heck? We can now visualize the light that's here now. And, and the light is so pristine and so loving, you want to rejoin with it. But before you do, 
I want you to see an altar in your mind and on that altar, put the things you think you need to be happy. And then see that altar and your body disappear into the light. That's bringing darkness to the light. Now, visualize that light from the great ray that's down the middle of you. It's clear and invisible light, but rejoin with that light. You've never not been joined with it. You've just not been aware of it. And like Lama Surya Da says, it's hard to join when you're not separate. So I no longer use the word join because you're already joined up. You're just not aware of it. So just focus your attention on that light and rejoin, meaning rest. Just rest in this light. Let that light settle. And sometimes what I do is I just picture that there's like a, at the top of the uh, great ray, it's an open column full of light. But the top's open, just see the top of it where love particles get poured inside this light tube. And the light particles are just like little flowers. They just filter down that ray. They're love. You are created by love. You are love. That's why I call this love light of immortal spirit that's your true self. Just rest in that light. Let that light settle in that tube or column or ray. If your mind wanders, that's no big deal. You just let those thoughts come and go. See them pass like birds in the sky or clouds in the sky. Thoughts just come and go. We don't have to cling on to them or push them away. Or I call it now, it came to me this week, Velcro. Just stick my mind right to a thought and hang on to it. No, no, that's ego. So you just let that thought go and bring your attention back to that clear light, invisible light that's there and rest in it. Again, if you're distracted or lost in thoughts, just be aware of that and bring your mind back to look at that invisible light. That's Christ's vision, Buddha vision, where you're imagining that light that's here now. That column of light comes down the middle of you. And, and from that column, all sides, it radiates through every cell of your body every cell. Now, basically what happens as your mind becomes illumined with light, because the body is an image in the mind, then the body becomes illumined. And because we think we are bodies, we, we experience we're bodies, that this body's here now. We never put the body in harm's way, but we can visualize that light extending out all sides of that vertical column of light that extends down the center of you into the ground, from the top of your head down to the ground. That's why quantum physics says there's really space, space and light. <laughs> there's no form there. Because you are the light of the world. That light radiates out everywhere, extends out. So when you want, you can bring your mind back to this 
place, your room, your place. But what's really, really helped me is to do this type of shorty called shorty or quickie meditation for a minute or two all through different times of the day and night. Because what it does, it gets, it reminds your, you to focus your attention back on your mind and then to see, visualize that column. It's a vertical column. This is the vertical axis of light. The horizontal axis Jesus talks about is the false world, where it's the battleground, the clouds. We think we're on this horizontal plane with all these images right here. But in the vertical plane, you ascend above it. You ascend above the battleground as you, your mind is purified of these thoughts of separation by you practicing true forgiveness. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this and being here. And Brian now is here. Welcome, Brian. And Sally's here. Hi, Sally. And look, Sharon arrived. Hello, Sharon. Thank you, thank you for being here. Now, after the meeting's over at eight, I'm gonna stop recording. We get to also chat. But also, if you have a question while I'm talking, just put your hand up because I, I want to answer questions as we go along. And at the end, I try to stop some and leave some time for questions or comments about how you're applying the course, how the rubber's hitting the road. Because like Jesus says in the workbook, it's the application of these lessons. That's where you will gain the experience because what we're wanting to do is gain the experience of this awareness of oneness, this awareness of this clear light mind that is your true self. So, oh, so tonight what my talk is based on is what is happening with, with me. And that's why I try to share these things, because as a practical uh, view, people tell me they like hearing what I practice and do to stabilize the light or what I've done, what Holy Spirit had me do in practicing the course to undo a false ego. The only true voice is, of course, Holy Spirit. We've made up this other voice. But so currently, even though my Ark of Light was released, like I said, March of 2019, and the Great Raid downloads almost daily, it's a process, everybody. I am not completely awakened or enlightened. It's a process. I don't know when this is going to be over. And it doesn't matter because we're on the road or you wouldn't be, be in this Zoom meeting because you're practicing these truths from the course and from other uh, grand authors like that Andrew Holacek and then like Mama Surya Doss and that Timo Speckens that I do that LA Dzogchen group, Tibetan Buddhist group. The similar parallel truths can help us understand Jesus's truth at a deeper level. But at what I found as this awakening is going on is it's like a ping pong ball I talk about where the mind is thinking an ego thought and it thinks a holy thought and it just goes back and forth. And sometimes people think something's wrong or ego wants to beat them up. Like, why can't you get this straight? Well, this is a quite a deal picture. Billions of years, you've been thinking you're a body. And those billions of lifetimes or thousands or hundreds of thousands of lifetimes, those judgments you've thought your body, your brother's a body, that's all in that unconscious guilt mind. That's the, in Art and per, in Gary Bernard's books, he talked about the tip of the iceberg. We only see the, the tip. There's miles deep of these judgment thoughts. We can't get to them. Holy Spirit heals those. But so, but as you do your forgiveness work, like Gary Bernard says in uh, Your Immortal Reality, you think nothing's happening. You, you do a forgiveness on somebody. You don't see any change. You don't feel any different. Sometimes people even say they're bored. They don't see anything happening. Well, art and person tell you, you keep practicing because you have no idea you're changing dimensions of time and space in the script that you agreed to. In the script that you agreed to, because we're mentally reviewing what's already gone by, the movie, that we each agreed to our own script, there's, I don't even know, thousands of dimensions of time and space. And as you practice this forgiveness, then you... Uh, uh, Art and person say, then you go into a different dimension of time and space that could be less hard knocks. 
So you don't even are aware this is going on. Now, what I have sent sometimes when I'm meditating and the great rays downloading, or I've had a moment of insight, there'll be a high pitched sound. Or there'll be a thud, like a cog, a cog turned is the only way I can describe it. And like the floor dropped, which later Holy Spirit will tell me that my, my heart opened up, uh, that love part of us opened up further. Because picture these thousands and thousands of lifetimes. We've had not, we've had parents love us. Thousands and thousands of parents love us and we've loved them, but we've had thousands and thousands of heartbreaks. <laughs> so yeah. those heartbreaks are in that iceberg. <laughs> so you, we might once in a while feel our heart, so-called heart chakra, because see, for me, of course, we're not a body, but in the mind, the mind, when we undo these thoughts, the mind gets more illumined with light then that body image is in the mind, it gets illumined and all those chakras that are in that body image are getting lined up and opening up so that they can radiate light all into this great ray. It's all a process of illumination of your mind and ultimately your body. But this, so you have no idea the significance of what you're doing. So I'm here to motivate you to keep practicing true forgiveness, regardless that you don't see anything happening. The other person out there doesn't change, et cetera. And remember, we're not here to fix anyone. We're here, here to heal our own mind from thoughts of separation from God and our brothers and ourselves. And maybe something will change out there. You, usually it does, but I cannot say it will because nobody can. We don't know what you're, I don't know what you agreed to. <laughs> or what your friend or family member agreed to in their script. I have no idea. So you just keep practicing. Oh, and you never, ever, ever put your body in harm's way and you're not a psychological doormat or a physical doormat. Never, ever. I still visit the doctor, take my vitamins and some meds. But while I do it, I'm practicing true forgiveness. And in the course, Jesus says, that's when we can compromise. We can use magic because we, we, I see it that I want to keep the form like I work out at a health club. I'm going to talk about that tonight. And I walk. But while I'm doing this, I practice true forgiveness on myself and the things I see in nature, et cetera, and at the health club. Okay. Anyway, so my message tonight is. And now this is from Gonzalo. Yes, yeah, so true, Glenn, that what matters is how we use and apply it consistently and unconditionally, not having expectations about how it will look. Holy Spirit and Jesus have no, have no need of expectation. Well put, Gonzalo. But you know that part of ego mind, it wants to expect something. If I do this, maybe they'll, they'll be more loving. So we're just catching our thoughts of tonight. My talk is about in the moment, in the moment. In the moment, there's no future, and that can't be an expectation, and there's no past. So that's why we're bringing our attention back to this moment. And it, that's also, I didn't quite, I didn't ever really understood really what that meant. To me now, what that means is like right now, we're in this Zoom meeting. We're in this moment of, uh, listen to me talk later, you, you'll be talking, but looking at people on the screen, that's this moment. But if you catch your mind thinking about something that went on today or what your family did, that's, that's ego. And you bring your attention back to the now, this moment, this only moment, what we're talking about now. So we're, uh, Jesus says in the course, we're just too tolerant of mind wandering, idle thoughts. So that's what we're doing. We're catching these thoughts and Jesus tells us in the course, the best way to figure out what we're thinking is how we feel and our mood. So if I feel, you know, sad and happy, angry, upset, that's definitely, you know, well, I'm on the wrong track here and you choose again. But ego gets more subtle. So it's not like that you're feeling angry, upset or what. The mind just wandered to think about what I ate for lunch today or what my husband said or what my partner said or blah blah you know you just get so then we get 
we get attached to that thought. And before you know it, we're off in a story. We're off in la la land. We're off in the hallucination. So then you just bring your mind back to the now, this moment, only moment. Okay, so I just, I, I wrote some things. So I'm just going to read it because I was kind of like in the flow of Holy Spirit. My message to you today is we only have this moment, only moment, the now, to be aware of what our mind is thinking. Can we be lucid about what our mind is thinking, feeling, and doing? Lucid means damn aware of it. Are you conscious of what the hell your mind's doing? Can we be mindful of what our mind's thinking? Are we allowing our minds to be lost in its projections, its egoic thoughts, or will we each take charge of our mind and choose again to be alert to the moment? Stay in the moment, practice true forgiveness, and visualize the clear light mind of holiness that's here now. Can we become free of ego's idle thoughts? And I say, yes, you can, one moment at a time. So we're not trying to think, oh, I'm going to do it all day tomorrow. One moment at a time is all we're doing. That's all we're being aware of. So I thought back here, what I, because I've been asking Holy Spirit to, to stop, you know, uh, how I want to, I want to stabilize my ability to be in my clear light mind and in the now. So what happened then, I got some help from that Lama Surya Das. He posts, he's a Buddhist Lama. He posts some things. Um, and here's the definition of, Samsara or ego is mind turned outward, lost in its projections. Nirvana or the real world is mind turned inwardly, recognizing its nature. So see what you're doing, half of the lessons in the course are to first get you to observe and be aware of what the heck ego's doing to you. Then the next the next half is taking you back into your mind to get you to see these images. I made them up. They're in my mind. And you're practicing inside your mind on the images. And see, this definition is Nirvana real world. Is your, you will end up, the mind will turn up, up upon itself. It will turn back upon itself. Instead of your two eyes out here projected, looking out there, the mind turns in about itself on itself and you're looking from behind your eyes out and that's Christ's vision and you will see clear light everywhere invisible light God light you know here everywhere so I say that definition of nirvana or real world to myself and I pause and I think about it mind turned inwardly recognizing its nature. And then I think about, well, what's its nature? You know, clear light, and then I'll go, okay, now for you, then you're just gonna fake it while you make it. You're gonna visualize clear light. Because if you look out front of you now, there's empty space, clear. You could call that clear light. It's invisible, or you can't see it. You know, it's invisible. That basically is what the clear light looks like. So. You're just thinking about visualizing that. So I say that I'm stabilizing my clear mind. I say that definition. Then I also say to myself, this moment, only moment, this moment, only moment. And I bring myself back. And I also imagine vertical, vertical cord or ray of light. It's vertical. And you align your attention with a vertical ray that's down the middle of you. You're just, it's just a moment. That's in that moment, in a holy instant, you'll be in a moment. And then I say to myself, oh, here's the next thing. Because see, when you look out in the clear light, you'll see these images. They're out here, <laughs> these forms. And, and I say to myself, there's only light because I truly, truly believe that. And I know it. There's only light. Even the shadows meeting these forms and images we made up are light. They are light because that's all there is, is light. And remember, quantum physics says there's space and light in every cell. There's really not a form here. 
So you're you're also faking that while you make it. You're just thinking about that that form. Also, you can visualize it just got it's got a great ray and its light is radiating out every cell of its body. However, you want to do these things, you're these are just tools that you want to sit with and see how you can use sentences and uh, change them to go for you, apply them for you. Oh, yeah. And then Gonzalo says there's a gradual release of identification with the body. We can't fake or deny our present level of faith and awareness. Right. That's why I say be normal. Don't put your body in harm's way. We're being normal while we practice all this, while we are stabilizing our vision in essence and re and become well you're first becoming aware of this clear life that's here and ultimately you'll be stabilizing vision but these same tools can help you now they can help you now because that clear light is here and the other thing i do is meditate for one hour with these two groups that zochin group out of la that's in my salutation in that Mama Surya's group out of Massachusetts on Sunday. And I've found that's in the last couple of months, those deep meditations have, I've been able to stay in the moment more often. And the, uh, the quickie shorty meditations I discuss. Then I also ask Holy Spirit, Jesus and Buddha to help me stabilize my awareness and my clear light mind. And help me be aware of my mind when it's wandering. And now this really helped me is because in in this Tibetan Buddha Buddhism that the Dzogchen master, a lama and masters teach is these thoughts that pass through your mind before you know it, we have a knee jerk reaction and we join in an instant with that thought and then do that thought out here. It's just, we don't, we haven't developed a pause between when the thoughts are showing up, but you will be developing a pause between your thoughts where it's not so automatic, this knee jerk movement, you'll, it'll go slower for you. But then you recognize that they call it clinging or uh, attachment or aversion. And I've got a new word, it's Velcro. Think I picture, I have a thought go through my mind and before I knew it, it's like Velcro. I just grabbed onto it, wham, like Velcro and I'm hanging on. And that means I stay with the story, I stay with the thought until I recognize, hold it. I'm not in the now, that, that thought I had is in the past or I'm thinking about the future and I let that thought go. Plus, I practice true forgiveness on if there was an image, a person in that story that was going through my mind or thought. Um, and I also, I read in the course and I read, there's a book, now I'm reading several books, but one of them is called The Natural Great Perfection by this uh, enlightened person that was translated by this Lama Surya Das. So now I'm just gonna read a couple things from the course is chapter 25, the now is all there is to time. It's in chapter 26, section five, eight, paragraph five. Yet only here and now its cause must be for a miracle is now. It stands already here in present grace within the only interval of time that sin and fear have overlooked. So the now is the only interval of time that sin and fear, they, don't, they overlook that. They don't want you to be in the now. You're, you're in a storyline, something for the future or something happened in the past. And then, then that Jesus says, the blood of hatred fades to let the grass grow green again and let the flowers be all white and sparkling in the summer sun. What was a place of death has now become a living temple in a world of light. Now, don't you love that? A living temple. Now, when I was practicing, sometimes, man, I didn't want to hear that the body was a temple. I mean, the body's symbol of the ego. But what Jesus is saying here is as you awaken and the body is illumined, it you actually, it, it, that, it, the light radiates out of it. You're a temple in a world of light. So you're illumined and you're radiating out light. 
And then from this uh, Natural Great Perfection uh, book, he's saying basically what Jesus is saying in the course, to not get wrapped up in these day-to-day activities, but to think of, get this high view, this high way of how you think of your brother is how you think of yourself. Practicing this advanced, advanced, I cannot say that word enough, advanced true forgiveness that Jesus teaches. And this is what this enlightened master said, you want to be vividly present and awake, free from concepts through constant remindfulness, recognizing everything wherever we are under all circumstances and conditions as a magical display, they call it rigpa, which means ego, seeing through everything and never falling prey to ego clinging, attachment and dualistic fixation, nor to its further elaborations. Thus we maintained our primordial throne, like the enlightened sovereign personifying intrinsic awareness. See, that's what Jesus says. You will be in charge of the kingdom. <laughs> you will be on the throne you of your Christ mind, your Buddha mind. <laughs> so the, there's parallel truths in all kinds of, of faiths, but particularly this high Dzogchen teaching. And now what, how I realized this, my mind is stabilizing is, I work out uh, three days a week at the health club and I walk each day, et cetera. Two of the days I work out with my sister and one day I work out by myself. So Sunday I was working out with her and picture I'm talking with her, there's people around and I caught my mind, go, go, I'd be on a certain machine doing the weights. My mind's thinking about what the next machine is going to, I'm going to do on the next machine or that person over there stop walking around or, and they, then the ego starts categorizing, separating them out by their appearance or et cetera. And I went, Oh no, we're not. <laughs> no, sir. We do. And brought my mind back to the moment of what was I doing on that particular weight machine? So I paid attention, like they said, vividly present, meaning how did my muscles feel when I was doing the machine? Because ego would really like for the mind to be off wandering and me to do my weight too much and strain an arm, right? That's the deal. When we're not alert to the moment for what we're doing in our life, whether we're cutting vegetables in the kitchen, driving our car, lifting weights for our form if we're not in the moment and alert we can be off task and something can happen right so it's not that we're a body I don't believe I'm a body I know I'm a mortal spirit but I'm being normal I'm not going to harm the body and lift too many weights and strain it you know etc so it's I was vividly in the moment with each machine or when my sister said something I'd be in the moment talking with her. Then I would also, in a second, look out and remember that my mind is turned inward, recognizing its nature. And I'd ask myself, what's your nature? Yeah, clear love light, clear light. And then, bam, I'd see the clear light spread out everywhere. So I'm talking to myself, Jesus, that's the one of the main things the Course does with all these lessons He's teaching, Holy Spirit and Jesus are teaching you to reason with yourself, which is what they're doing with you. If, if, if God is love, then where the hell did all this come from? So there's either love or the call for love. So you're reasoning with yourself. That person's not a body. I just thought they were a body. And I agreed with ego that they were this certain size or look or whatever. Or why don't they get their life straight? Then you go, uh-uh, uh-uh, practice. Then you turn your mind back on itself and practice to forgiveness. You are spirit. Whole pureness and all is forgiven and released on that person. Then you go on about your business, lifting those weights again, right? <laughs> or whatever you're doing. Okay, then today when I was working out, see, I meditate with that Zochian group out of LA at noon. 
but I, they, I had enough time to go to the gym. But as I was going, I could, I was aware ego was saying, well, you may not get back for that meditation. It already was going into the future. And I go, hold it. I, I, I don't know. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to be alert to driving my car, watching these other cars so that I don't have an accident or, or be defensive driving because we are practical with this course. We are practical and normal and we want a happy dream in that less turmoil. <laughs> so, but then when I got to the gym, the same thing was my mind would wander to some activities that I was going to do later about some different machines. And then also, and I had to bring my mind back. No, no, no. I'm on this machine. I'm on this weight. Here's my arm. There's my leg. What's it doing? Here's the clear light. I am spirit. And just soften and rest in that light. I would soften for a second or two. Rest in the light. Let the light stabilize. Which means just be there in that moment. Be there in that moment of that clear light. But also in the moment of whatever you're doing. But I also recognized my mind was thinking, ego mind, was thinking about some texts I'd sent some people. And I'm going, well, I'm not thinking about that because that was the past, right? So that, so what I'm describing is what the constant idle wandering that's going on in the mind. But as you practice forgiveness and let Holy Spirit and meditate, turn your day over to Holy Spirit, you, this pause happens where you're able to see these thoughts and choose again how you want to think. It is entirely possible because I'm a living example. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I am not special. It's just I'm practicing. <laughs> okay, now it's about uh, 746. So anyone have a thought or a Something you want to share with group before I I can continue on with <laughs> something. <laughs> um, now uh, uh, Gonzalo talked about um, is about this this uh, ego attachment. That's the other thing that's happened in the last month or two. I guess the last month is, and see, I had, I didn't have any expectation about what any of this would do other than Jesus says, you can wake up from the dream. And I believe him, <laughs> I believe full trust, full trust that you, we can wake up from the dream and become enlightened, which means, um, which means you're aware, you're aware of this perfect oneness and your mind, your mind is actually, you know, you're aware of the light in your mind and that light actually then fills the form you're illumined, but also, but the bigger deal is the awareness, your awareness of, of the, of the moment, the only moment and what your brother is and living in this in a more in a joyous state because you know what you are immortal spirit love light one with all your brothers and you, that you will things you say can help your family or loved ones in a in a way that you won't even un, think about or understand could help bring peace to someone else and help them awaken or become enlightened so um so I have no expectations. So anyway, I didn't know literally I was going to have two actual death experience, ego death experiences where in meditation, I would see a dense, first a circle of light, dense black light. And immediately I knew that ego had collapsed upon itself. And I told myself that I, I know there's only light. And, but the second time it happened in meditation is I had seen, um, there's usually a black background or there can be colored backgrounds. And then there were white geometric forms floating, white forms floating and white light, various colored lights. It doesn't even matter what lights or what colors anything is. But I was seeing something other than black. And all of a sudden, my, my light in my meditation went totally black. 
this dense black. And for that moment, I was panicked for a second and, and thought to myself, where did everything go? And real quick, I said to myself, there's only light. That's ego death again. And I asked Holy Spirit for help and the word love came to me. The only reason I explain that is you want to be aware that you're not pushing yourself too fast because this is a process where uh, Holy Spirit and Jesus will take you where fear is less. There'll be less fearful episodes in your mind and around you. So um, this, this is a process that's continuing to go on for me since March of 2019. So yeah, so here we go. So I don't know. Okay, Gonzalo, yes, uh, you can unmute yourself. I'll unmute you. And you have a question? Yeah, I, what you said about um, the expectations part, I think is so key because I was hearing Earl Purdy talk on one of his lessons that popped up today and it really sunk in so beautifully with what I shared on the email that really we get caught up in judging our progress in, you know, after hey, I've been doing the course so long, and we start beating ourselves up through the back door of, you know, the spiritual ego, when we start having episodes like what happened, I felt a real sharp uh, slap of guilt the other night. And, and, and we, what the, the, the groundwork of that is that we are judging our progress. Oh man, it's not supposed to be, come on, this is not supposed to happen. And it's really so important that our only part, like he mentioned, is just our willingness to ask for the light to come in. That's it, to sincerely stay in that place of open asking and not, not focus on how it's going to turn out because God, Jesus already knows how it's going to turn out. We just have to trust that. And, and it really just dawned on me as he said that our, our concentration, our absolute focus has to be on our willingness. When we're caught in analyzing it and caught in judging how it looks, you know, that's when the ego's got us. But it's so important. It's, it sounds simple and it really is. That's why I was saying that we really need a simple sort of our prayers and our meditations just have to come back to be very simple. You know, the book is very thick, but ultimately the, 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 the spirit of it has to be for us a very simple reminder of just stay in that light, like you said, just stay in the light of, of openness and asking, because it's so easy to fall into, oh, ooh, this feels wrong, I'm not doing this right, and we start beating ourselves up like what happened a couple nights ago, uh, so mm -hmm. the, 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 the consistency of just focus, I'm, I'm, but I'm willing, no matter how I feel, I'm willing, I'm willing to continue to ask for Jesus to come in. That's well, what, so what I love, Gonzalo, is that you recognized how you felt mm -hmm. that you had agreed with ego about a judgment of yourself and you sat with it. You didn't overreact. You sat with it overnight and then asked, I'm sure, Holy Spirit for help. So that's all that Jesus says throughout the course. Our feelings and our mood tell us and we would Holy Spirit would never do that. Make anyone feel guilty or you're not doing it right, or why can't you do this faster? Because that's why I bring up about the ping pong ball. Just pat yourself on the back. Think about in the beginning before we studied the course or these other high teachings, we were probably 99% ego. One, one little point might have thought of somebody's holy, maybe the Pope, I don't even know. Maybe somebody's holy out there. But then it goes, what, 80, 20, then it goes 60, 40, where ego 60 percent, 40 percent of the time you might be thinking some holy thoughts. So it just keeps getting narrower and narrow. Where, but when you're down there to 80 percent Holy Spirit thoughts and 20 percent ego, that's why it takes up of time, a process in the illusion of time. Um, but of course, there isn't. That's why your mind is aware of. What am I thinking? Am I thinking about the future? 
Am I thinking about the past? Now, don't get me wrong. I still plan and buy an airline ticket. I'm going to go see Gary Renard. Yay. In North Carolina, <laughs> October 2nd. <laughs> this, wear a mask. I'm vaccinated. <laughs> and, um, and visit some friends. And, but then, um, um, so we're, we're still normal, but yet we're we're still practicing this true forgiveness. It's the way out. Saves you thousands of years. I forgot if I mentioned that. Jesus says in the course, practicing this type of advanced forgiveness saves you thousands of years, eons, he says, E-O-N-S. And I also explain each time, well, if he didn't believe in reincarnation, remember that little section in the back of the book? He says, yeah, you can believe it or not believe it. Well, where the, why the heck he says saves you eons? And thousands of years because there is birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, birth, death. Because we think we're a body, we're experiencing we're a body, and that's why we're awakening to remember we're not a body, we are free, we're still as God created us. And not letting ego put a timeline on us or a, a I so oh, that's the other thing I realize is I'm now open to I don't know anything. I still don't know anything other than practice. Keep practicing and be in the moment. And uh, uh, because when I start to think, oh, oh, maybe I'm close. Am I there? Is that person there? How are they doing? No, 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 no. See, because it's a process. We don't know anything. We stay open. We stay open. That way, then Holy Spirit can give you ideas uh, to help free you up from your thoughts. And, and give you examples of some little technique that can help you, you know, practice more thoroughly. Now, thank you, Gonzalo. Thank you. Christian has a, a, a question. Oh, maybe he doesn't. That's his picture. <laughs> That's his avatar. <laughs> okay. Anybody else got a thought or comment? <laughs> you smiling faces out there, you lovely sweeties all right let's pick three more people and practice true forgiveness on them i'm telling you this is the this is the way out that's what i learned from disappearance of the universe is the simplicity of jesus's course i think i've even got a document where in the i forget the section jesus uses an explanation mark three times in one section now he rarely uses one right and he says, the answer, this is the answer. This is the answer. <laughs> it's true forgiveness. That in that section, that's, that's your fast way. This is the fast ticket out. <laughs> okay, all right. Pick three people and do uh, uh, advanced forgiveness on them again, please. And again, the thing I realize is I didn't know what I was doing when I was doing this, this simple forgiveness we're, we're doing right now for all five years off and on. Th th this is huge. <laughs> it is so huge. You just keep practicing whether you think something's happening or not. Okay. Well, if there's no questions, then I may close the meeting. Well, uh, uh, but first we can unmute and say bye and hi, because some people may leave to each of us. I, I really, really appreciate you all being here and wanting to practice A Course of Miracles and wanting to be in the moment and get your Christ vision of clear light mind and be aware of it because it's already there, not get it. It's here. You know, we're just not aware of it. <laughs> So you, I don't know how thank to you, unmute Glenda. everybody, but you can unmute and say, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, Glenda. Glenda. Thank, thank you, all. everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank, 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 thank you, Glenda. Thanks, everyone. God bless. I love Bye. you guys. I want to stop the recording. Okay, stop the recording.